Yo, if you are into editing or 3D or you just like watch other people make it shit, you probably stumbled across those P6 or PS1 style videos online. Yeah, yeah those pixelated, crunchy, weird gold palettes, low poly charm. And that's what we are building today. I'm gonna show you how to go from a completely blank blended project to a finished short in the aesthetic, step by step. I promise by the end of this you'll be able to repeat everything you see. Yeah, because I'm gonna show you each action. Stay with me, don't skip ahead, or I'll hurt your skipping finger with time comes later. And this tutorial won't be some dry monologue where you fall asleep. I'll keep it tight and paced, and uh, you'll have clear markers if you wanna jump sections. Yo, let's start. The first question you always ask when opening a blank project. Am I modeling everything myself, or do I just grab assets? Mm, you know the answer. For speed and wipe, we'll grab high quality, low poly assets. The site I use is uh, each IO, type A6, or low poly, or PS1, and you'll get uh, textures, single models, and full scenes. Yeah, download what you like and import the models into Blender. I already imported everything I need, so real work begins now. Quick tip for importing, prefer FBX or OBG. OBJ, fuck the textures and if the pack has a blend file, use it. It keeps material links intact. Now a small but critical step I always do for vegetation and leaf textures. If a leaf texture looks like it's supposed to be transparent, but shows as black and the render or cast ugly blocky shadows, go into the material settings for the leaf and change blend mode to alpha hashed. Why alpha hashed? Because uh, full alpha clipping can produce hard, aliased edges and uh, encourage shadowing. Alpha hash gives you better soft alpha edges while being faster than full sourcing of transparency, especially in cycles. I also set the materials shadow mode to alpha hash so shadows respect the transparency. Otherwise, Blender may treat the plane as fully opaque or fully transparent when uh, computing the shadows and you'll get black holes or encourage dark shapes under the trees. Turn on backface cooling too, if you are dealing with uh, single-sided planes, backface cooling hides uh, the back of the leaf plane so you don't render both sides unnecessarily and uh, it prevents weird double lightning artifacts when normals get flipped. These three little changes fix a ton of obvious PS6 foliage problems. I also remember to switch base texture parameters, roughness, metallic color, not everything should be default. For example, tree bark and wood uh, often look off because the roughness is wrong. If the bark looks too glossy, it will read as fake. Increase roughness toward one for organic surface so specular highlights stay tiny and believable. Small misconfigured material values will ruin the wipe even if the geometry is perfect. Next, we create the ground plane. They will be our field. Add the plane, go into edit mode and uh, subdivide it several times to give you geometry to sculpt. Switch to sculpt mode and just start painting. The six style doesn't mean flat. Having an even tearing sells realism and gives you places to place grass and particles so the scenery is interesting and low resolution. After sculpting, apply a tile and texture I pulled from each IO. If the texture looks uh, enormous or too small on the plane, use the node wrangle trick. Select the image texture node and press Ctrl plus T to add mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Then use the mapping node uh, to scale the texture until it fits the plane visually. If uh, Ctrl plus T does nothing, uh, enable node wrangle in preferences and then add-ons. It's essential for fast shader work. If you see obvious texture, tiling or seams, don't panic. In our case, we'll hide many of them with the vegetation and by painting variation. For grass, um, I'm not going to cheat with a single plane sprites. I'm using the botanic add-on to scatter grass meshes. Yes, botanic is designed for realistic scenes, but it gives us a starting point and it's fast. Import two grass assets, mark them editable. Then in botanic, choose the folder with uh, those grass objects. Turn off rotation and uh, a small pro tip, when scattering, adjust scale randomness and seed. The seed lets you quickly irritate different distributions uh, until the pattern feels organic. Never keep the default seed for long, it's uh, usually repetitive. I'm aware the botanic is used in many of my videos and uh, it can get uh, irritating to watch the same steps over and over. So I'll skip use of these clicks in the recording. Once grass is scattered, I realized my scene concept. A large stone as focal point, a terrified skeleton postured on the stone, a forest behind it, and the monster they will wander the gap, then find the skeleton near the end. Yes, my storylines are better than Tarantino's. 
maybe. But the narrative matters. How you stage objects dictates camera choices and animation beats. Now I started placing objects. The stone came first. The downloaded rock was too blocky, like uh, six polygons. Perfect for PS1 nostalgia, but not for a readable silhouette at camera distance. So I added a remesh modifier to give it a smoother silhouette while retaining low poly charm. Remesh can change UVs, so my texture fell off and I had to ran warp. Go into edit mode, select all faces, right click, unwarp. Once unwrapped, tweak the texture scale in the mapping node until the texture lies correctly. If your texture stretches weirdly, you might need a project cube unwarp for rocks or use smart UV project for quick fixes. Next, uh, grass optimization. Scattered real grass meshes can have lots of triangles. I used the dismate modifier on my grass subjects to lower polygon count until I got a good visual vest performance compromise. For PS6 aesthetic, you actually want low polygraphs, so decimate more aggressively than you would in a release scene. Repeat decimation for all vegetation that feels too dense. Remember, decimation can break UVs. Check your textures after decimate and uh, ran warp if needed. Now set up the camera and the composition. I wanted a vertical crop for Instagram, so I changed the render resolution to the aspect and framed the shot. Farming choices matter, the rule of thirds uh, still applies even in PS6. Place your focal elements of center for tension, also make the viewport look better while you compose. In the viewport shading settings, uh, turn on cavity and set the shading to show textures. Cavity exaggerates edges and helps you read the geometry while you frame, especially useful for low poly silhouettes. With the camera set, uh, I built a background forest. Using botanic again, I defined a scatter zone rather than scattering trees across the entire plane. It gives the forest a believable edge and uh, avoids trees sprouting in the foreground where they block the shot. If you wonder why some leaf textures render as black uh, or throw weird shadows, the usual culprit uh, is light path settings. In cycles, increase the transparent uh, max bounces uh, in the render properties and the light paths. This tells the render how many transparent bounces is uh, to consider when calculating light passing through alpha planes. If it's too low, uh, light doesn't pass correctly through alpha tested leaves and uh, causes black silhouettes. I cranked mine to around uh, 52 for safety. It's high but solves to burn alpha shadow issues. Also, adjust the botany scatter seed until the distribution looks organic. A seed change uh, will shift vegetation usually without changing other settings. Moving to the skeleton. Yeah, I needed it. Uh, it's seated against the stone and animated. I don't claim to be a master animator, but I'll explain the practical base approach I used. Animation is a set of timed poses. Start by blocking major poses on the timeline. For example, pose 1. Skeleton sitting, hunched hands on head. Pose 2. Slightly lifted, looking around. Pose 3. Back to the original startled pose. Place those as key poses at bits where the audio or scene demands them. Then go in and uh, add breakdowns between those keys. Adjust uh, hands, fingers and shoulders. When a hand uh, penetrates a mesh or looks wrong, add the corrective keyframes to adjust rotation, position and make sure intersections are resolved. The key to realism is timing. When the skeleton nods or tilts the head, uh, animate the neck first, then the head follows. With the head motion taking a frame or two longer, the delay called uh, follow through sells weight. You can study your own movement in real life or a film reference for small legged motions. I almost drowned in this process. So quick tip, animate broad strokes first, then refine small joints later. Also, I picked 15 FPS for the PS6 aesthetic. You can use a 12 or 10, but I chose 15 because uh, it's a sweet spot. Block enough to feel retro, but uh, still smooth for modern eyes. After keying, I smooth the uh, animation curves by selecting all keyframes and using Blender smoothing shortcut sequence. I used the uh, Alt plus O. You used the custom flow there. The principle is the same. Use the graph editor to soften tangents and apply consistent easing. A few smoothing passes until motion reaches nicely. Important, uh, be pragmatic. I didn't obsess because uh, I had uh, 8 hours of raw footage to edit later. Now the monster, uh, I forgot to add it, wait. Yo, here's how I approached uh, Mixamo and FBX exports so you don't waste time. First, uh, make sure your model uses principal BSDF in the material. Mixamo tools and uh, many exporting pipelines expect uh, standard PBR materials. Uh, Non-standard nodes can strip textures on export. Before exporting to FBX, select File, External Data, Pack All into a Blend File. Then File, Export, FBX. In the Export dialog, set Path Mode to Copy and click uh, the little icon to the right to embed textures. If Mixama refuses to rig, uh, check model symmetry. 
like multiple arms or big horns can confuse the auto rigger. Yeah, so choose a wall animation on mixed ammo. Sometimes uh, default walls look strange for monsters. Pick something that is as heavy as slow. After importing the animation back to Blender, I realized it uh, was auto at 30 FPS. The end result uh, isn't perfect. If you want better blending, use uh, transition strips or a root uh, motion approach and blend uh, with the rotation or position phase in the inlay. By the way, most add-ons I used are bundled in the pack itself. You get 5 preset scenes uh, and permission for commercial use. Check the store. Uh just check it. Alright, time to light this thing up. I used uh, Pure Sky to get a fast night preset, active the add-on, pick night and uh, immediately crank a moon search zone. If your viewport uh, goes dark after applying a night preset, dial in the moon intensity and the color temperature until you can read silhouettes. For a PSX vibe, push the color slightly toward blue, but not fully teal, uh, just cooler. For the K character, the skeleton, added an array light angled for moon direction, but slightly warmer, so it separates the subject from the blue ambient. For the background, added another array light to hit the, a tree silhouette depth, set low intensity, so the force freeze, but doesn't become focal brightness. I also added a small spotlight near the camera to simulate the camera mounted lamp. Tiny intensity, white cone, soft file off. It just gives a touch of rim uh, to foreground edges. For the skeleton, center glow. Instead of adding another light, I put an emission shader inside uh, the chest bones. A low intensity orange emission mixed uh, with a subtle freshness, so inner parts glow and create interest. This orange blue contrast is classic cinematography trick to separate subject from environment. For horns and eyes, uh, I used small spheres with emission shaders instead of point lights for very efficient, visually crisp glow. Easy to drive by keyframing emission strength or leaking to drivers if you want them pulsing. Final environment detail, fog. Create a large cube covering the scene, set volume shader to volume scatter, keep color white or slightly tinted and uh, tune density low. Even tiny densities make a huge difference. Volume scatter adds visible light shafts and the atmospheric depth, perfect for PS6 mood. I also added moving particles using Omega particle or any particle add-on. Keep particle opacity subtle. I ran to passes, denoised and non-denoised, so I could compare the look and show you both. Denoising changes uh, micro details, sometimes softening the pixelated feel, so test both. I used uh, 128 samples and my light pass settings were tuned to balance quality and speed. If you use uh, large volumes or transparent leaves, you'll need higher transparent bounces. I rendered it at a slightly small base resolution and set the render scale to 200%, effectively rendering at higher sample density and then pixelating later. Because uh, I prefer to control pixelization in post with mosaic filters to get uh, an exact retro pixel look. Now move to After Effects for post. Important uh, when you import image sequence, the default 30 FPS sometimes. Right click the footage, interpret footage, main, and set the frame rate to 15 FPS. If you don't do this, uh, the animation will play twice as fast or be out of sync. In After Effects, I do a base grade. Curves for contrast, colorista to push the orange mid-tones and slightly crash shadows, then deep glow with the low radius and intensity to give small highlights, a glow without blowing out detail. Add a subtle film grain layer. For pixelization, I used mosaic with a carefully set horizontal or vertical count to get a PS6 black look. Don't overdo mosaic. Keep it strong enough to read low res, but not strong the motion becomes in the cre <laughs> You know. Yo, a quick tip, if you want me to take your scene and show how I would separate it in a follow-up video, send it to my email in the description. I'll pick some and do a full breakdown and then before and after. That's it. Now hit render and uh, there's a version with denoise and without. You can watch full version on my Instagram, yeah, link in the description.